Hello friends, this video on nutrition in plants part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the question that arises in your mind is how gaseous exchange occurs. Now we saw that during the process of photosynthesis, so one of the important raw material is carbon dioxide. So now the question is from where is this carbon dioxide coming inside the plant? So from there is plants taking in carbon dioxide and how is plant giving out the oxygen which is produced as a result of photosynthesis? So how is the exchange of these two gases taking place with, in case of plants? So that is where stomata plays a very important role. So stomata are the tiny holes which are present on the leaves of plant and through these tiny pores carbon dioxide and oxygen are exchanged between the plant and the surroundings. So let us try to understand stomata in more detail. So these are tiny pores on the surface of leaves. So when you try to focus on the leaf of a plant, one particular leaf and observe it under a microscope, you actually see the presence of these kind of pores and these pores are stomata. Now these pores are so tiny that they cannot be seen with your naked eye. So if you actually look at a leaf, you will not be able to see those pores. You will be able to see them only when you use a, a good microscope. Now through these pores, the carbon dioxide will get inside the plants and the oxygen will be thrown out. So gaseous exchange occurs through these stomata. So if you actually look at the structure of a leaf, so what do we see? Till now, whatever we have learned, we understood that chlorophyll plays a very important role. Stomata plays a very important role as far as photosynthesis is concerned. Now, this is how a leaf looks like when you observe just the side or the thickness of the leaf under a microscope. So this is basically the upper surface of the leaf and this is the lower surface of the leaf. So basically this is the thickness of the leaf. So hope you are able to understand. So if I draw a leaf like this, okay, let's say this is a leaf. So this leaf, just the thickness, this thickness. So just imagine how thin it is. So I have just magnified that thickness just to tell what all are present inside that. So this is the upper surface of the leaf. So maybe this is the upper surface and the bottom surface, the other side of it is the lower surface, that is this surface. So in between that, you have the outer layers, they are the epidermis. So epidermis is present on the upper surface as well as on the lower surface. And on this epidermis, you have openings and these openings are stomata. So here you see, this is stomata. So this is how stomata actually looks like when you see the um, detailed structure of a leaf. Now it has been observed that more number of stomata are present on the lower surface of the leaf when compared to the upper surface. So this is the lower surface of leaf. So this is the lower surface of leaf and this is the upper surface. So more number of stomata are present on the lower surface. Now in between these two layers of epidermis, so this is one layer of epidermis, this is one layer of epidermis and again this is another layer of epidermis. Epidermis is nothing but the outermost layer of cells. And in between that, you have the mesophyll layer. So this middle layer is called the mesophyll layer. And in this mesophyll layer, you have two types of cells. So you see one, you have these green colored cells which are arranged parallelly to each other. And the other type of cell which you have is this one where you have a lot of spaces in between them. So these cells are called the spongy cells and these cells are called the palisade parenchyma cells. So these are the two types of cells which are present in the mesophyll layer. Now where exactly is chlorophyll located? So chlorophyll is also present in the mesophyll layer. So here you got to know where exactly in a leaf you have the stomata, it is on the outer surface and where do you have the chlorophyll in the mesophyll layer that is in, in the middle layer. 
So now we will look at the movement of the stomata, how stomata allows gases to come inside, how it allows gases to go out. So let's see how it actually works. So there are a pair of guard cells, like how you have, like let's consider the example of your house. So if somebody wants to enter inside the house or if somebody wants to come out of the house, how will that person come out or enter? Through the doors. That is why you have doors. So when the doors open, a person can enter or exit. When the doors get closed, nobody can enter nor can anybody exit. Right. So in a very similar way, these guard cells, they act as doors for the stomata. So if they want, they can close the stomata. If they want, they can open the stomata. So they are nothing but a pair of kidney shaped cells. They have very thin walls on the outer side and thick walls on the inner side. So let us look at the picture. So this is the picture where you can see the stomata and the guard cell. So stomata is basically the opening. So here you see this open space is stomata or the stomatal pore. But this pore is created by two cells, these yellow colored cells. So these pair of cells is guard cells. So when the guard cells come very close to each other, like in this case, so you see the pore is actually closed. So the stomata gets closed. When they move apart from each other, the stomata opens. And whenever the stomata opens, the gases can move through the pore. As soon as it closes, no more gases can move. So that's how these guard cells govern the opening and closing of the stomata. And the opening and closing of stomata decides the exchange of uh, gases through the stomata. So that's how uh, the opening and closing of stomata is controlled. So let's see how exactly this thing happens. So if you look at this picture, you can actually see the two guard cells, they are coming closer to each other and then the stomata closes. Again, when they move away from each other, the opening increases. So more space is created for gas exchange. Now, it is not only, I mean, now there has to be something which is controlling the guard cells also because guard cells are no magical cells that they will just uh, move, they'll just make such movements on their own. So, there are a lot of factors which actually affect this movement of guard cells. So, some of the important factors are light, temperature, carbon dioxide, oxygen, water availability potassium concentration. So these are some of the important factors which actually govern the movement of the stomata or we can say they govern the movement of the guard cells. So we will not get into the detail of these factors right away because uh, you will learn about them in your higher classes. But for now, you should just know that this stomata allows gases to be exchanged like exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide and their movement is controlled by the guard cells. So with this, I think we discussed all the important factors in photosynthesis. So what did we learn? In photosynthesis, the first thing that is required is sunlight and the sunlight has to be absorbed and it is absorbed by this green pigment called chlorophyll, which is present in the mesophyll layer of leaves. So the first thing is absorption of light by chlorophyll. Then what happens? This light gets absorbed. So the light energy that gets converted to chemical energy and this chemical energy helps in the chemical reaction where hydrogen is split to form oxygen. So if you look at the chemical reaction of photosynthesis, it goes something like this. Carbon dioxide plus water forms carbohydrate, which is in the form of glucose plus oxygen. So what do you see? You actually see that water gets broken down to release oxygen. So in this chemical reaction, you need for this chemical reaction to take place, there has to be some energy which will help in splitting of the water molecules. So that energy is obtained from this light energy. Reduction of carbon dioxide into carbohydrates. So we see that carbon dioxide gets reduced to carbohydrates. So this is how the process of photosynthesis happens. So we already saw that light plays an important role. Chlorophyll plays an important role because chlorophyll helps in absorbing the light energy. Carbon dioxide, how it comes inside the plants, it comes through the stomata of plants. Water, we provide water to the plants. Water also takes, the plants also take water from the soil. And the oxygen also gets released through the stomata. 
So this is how the entire process of photosynthesis take place. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.